Hello everybody, it's Joe, and with another 3D printing blender tip for making really cool things for your 3D printer. And today we're going to be talk about, we're going to be talk about, look at me, my mouth doesn't even work. We're going to be talking about uh, how Blender can do CAD-like precision modeling, which is one of the major criticisms of Blender is that it's not built for doing CAD-like precision. And it's not, but that doesn't mean it can't do it. You can still do exact prints, which sometimes you have to do. You have to match your things to the real world. But before we talk about that, I'm going to talk really quickly about a post, uh, a comment on my last video. Doodad does said uh, that he found Blender very difficult to use, which is another common problem uh, that bl people talk about with Blender is that it is difficult to use. And, you know, Doodad does isn't wrong. Uh, Blender is kind of hard to get into here let me let me draw you a quick illustration okay uh here we go see if we okay so so let's uh let's take a look at this is so weird drawing like this okay uh so here's a graph with with time and and uh and and your skill or or, or the difficulty anyways as you start with Blender, it's got this really hard difficulty curve, and then it kind of levels out. Whereas, you know, a lot of software, they try and get you into it easy, and then the difficulty stuff comes later. And actually, Blender kind of keeps, you know, you keep learning with Blender, and it keeps going up. But the, but the point is, the point is, that yeah, Blender is a bit weird and difficult to use. And this is a great time to talk about this, because in my last video, I said, oh, look, I'm, I'm behind on Blender. Well, I'm not behind now. I updated to the latest version of Blender, and I lost all of my settings, so I'm going to have to reset my settings, and I'm going to show you what I do. But check this out. Right here on this front menu, right where it's nice and, and easy to see, there's this interaction preset. If you're a 3D Max person, like Doodad does is, uh, you could just set it to 3D Max, and, and all your settings will go so that they feel and look like 3D Max. Now, I haven't used 3D Max in a long time. I also haven't used Maya in a long time, but if that's your cup of tea. Um, but it's not mine. Uh, hold on for a second. I'm going to move the mic. That probably sounded terrible to you. Here's how I set up Blender. First thing I do is I go to the user preferences, and I go to the interface, and I choose, wow, things have moved a little bit. New version of Blender, so we're going to be discovering things together. Eh, that's, 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 that's the way things happen. Okay, there, somewhere around here, there is a, there it is. Uh, continuous grab, there we go, select with left. That's all I change. I change it so it selects with the left mouse button, because normally Blender selects with the right mouse button. And why they chose to do that... I don't know why they chose to stick with it. I do know because it's hard to, you know, there, there are a lot of people who have been with Blender for a long time and actually prefer to click with the right mouse button. Now, the funny thing about this, uh, let's save those settings and close this. The funny thing about this is it doesn't work down here in the animation window. In the animation window, you still select with the right mouse button instead of the left mouse button. Again, I don't know why they do this. And I don't use the animation window a lot. Uh, I'm starting to use it a little bit more as I get into simulations. The other thing I want to do is change my view and get rid of the light and the camera because I hardly ever need those. So we'll just delete those. Uh, in fact, I don't even need the, the default key. So let's... Where's my... Why are you not shifting my view? Okay. Oh, I need to have my num lock on. There we go. <laughs> Boy, my num lock wasn't on. And there we go. I set my view so it's let's see if I can do it. Do 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 do. Yeah, nice little orthographic 45 degree view. This is the way I set it. And I like to uh save this as my startup file. That way every time I start Blender, it looks like this. So there we go. That's how I set up Blender. If you're used to 3D Max, you should do that. This is also why I will very rarely... Oh, the other thing I need to do is set this so that the camera lines up with it. So that my head is just in the corner there. I'll make this a little bit bigger too. There we go. So I'm covering up the, uh, the object's view, which isn't a big deal. Uh, I'll save that startup file. 
Yeah, so if you're from a 3D Studio Max, you can set it up to do 3D Studio Max. If you're from Maya, you can set it up to do Maya. It's not going to be exactly the same, but it will probably reduce that learning curve that I drew for you earlier. Let's talk about modeling precise things. Let's say that in, in my book, 3D Printing Blueprints, which I haven't brought up to the workbench area here, uh, I talk about... Did I bring it up? Oh, I don't think I've got it on my show off shelf. I make a ring that holds an SD card in it because it was one of the silly projects that I did a long time ago when the computer was downstairs and the 3D printer was upstairs and I sometimes had sweatpants on that didn't have any pockets in it I just created a ring that held my 3D or that held my SD card so that I would have my hands free because inevitably on the way from my computer downstairs to my 3D printer upstairs, I would get distracted and I would need to do something on the way. Five kids, it happens. So let's talk about modeling uh, a, a thing. Hey, look at that, it's capturing my mouse cursor. That's cool, it wasn't doing that last time and I don't know why it is now. If there's anybody who's a master on open broadcasting could tell me why. All right, let's model something that can hold an SD card. Here's how you do it, you get out your digital calipers if you don't have digital calipers, you should really have digital calipers. If you want to save a little bit, you can get these analog calipers, and they're really cool, and there's actually a trick to using them, so you can get them to be just as precise as, uh, as the digital calipers. Um, and I go over that trick in my book, actually, so there's, there's this video's plug. I'll stop plugging the book, I promise. And so I'm going to measure the SD card, and it is 23.92 this way. It is 31.91 this way, and this is all in millimeters, by the way, and it is 2.12 millimeters thick. Now, in Blender, your units aren't anything. They're Blender units. However, when you take that Blender object and export it, the Blender units become, for most programs, millimeters. Uh, most 3D printing is in metric, and most of the base units is in millimeters. So, let's add a cube, just like the one I deleted a second ago. Um, I like to enter edit mode and move it up by one unit, so that the origin is right at the bottom of this thing. This allows me to scale it, uh, and it doesn't go down, it just goes up. If I scale it in the Z, it just goes up. I have to force it to go down. But I'm not going to worry about that right now because here's what we do. You open up this properties panel here. You open it up by pressing N or I think it's under view properties panel uh, somewhere. If I see the letter N, on there it is, properties. So you can click that right there. And then in here it has also oh so many wonderful settings in this properties panel. I, I have this properties panel open a lot of the time, but here I can set the dimensions of this object. So let's let's see if I can remember the dimensions of this object. Or I gotta check them again. Uh, let's see, 23.91 this way. So 23.91. Uh, Thirty-one point eight eight now. I may have to recalibrate it, but oh well. Thirty-three point eight eight and two point. It was one two before. Yeah, two point one two. Uh, two point one two. And there is a three D model of an SD card laying down. I don't want it laying down. Uh, I got my dimensions wrong, and I should have I should have had this be Z and this be Y. But you know, I'm gonna go lazy, and I'm just gonna rotate it uh, 90 degrees. There we go. Now it's up. Now it's below there. But who cares? There is a virtual SD card measured exactly. Now the other thing is that it, let's talk an, uh, another technique. Let's say that I want this thing. Ooh. All right. So let's imagine that I actually got it right and this thing's sitting there. I'm going to set the origin to the 3D cursor. And I want to move it up 2 millimeters because, well, I'll show you why. First, though, I'm going to hit G, then move it up into Z, and then I'm going to type 2. That moves it up exactly 2. So you can type 
how far you want it to move. Again, another way to get that precision.